rescheduling the rest of my day. Schedule your online care now at hfnow.org. Your care, your time. Not a substitute for medical advice. If you have a medical emergency, call 911 or go to the nearest emergency room immediately. AM 1300 WMEL. Here's a little money now. Do it just the way we planned. You be cool for 20 hours and I'll pay you 20 grand. It's the lure of easy money. It's got a very strong appeal. So, in, in that earlier generation, houses weren't for flipping around. They weren't for speculation. Houses were to live in. And it's Wayne West back here in the studio live on WMAL with Lorene Trent and our special guest, Leslie Michael. Today, we are talking about just what the OJs are singing about right here. Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. Welcome back, friends. This is Laureen Trent, WMEL 1300, like Wayne said, in the studio. And I have Vern over here next to me, Vern Harper. I'm so thrilled. And Leslie Michael on the phone. And we are talking about money. And um, we're going to get back to, we were, we were talking before the break on the rate of return between um paying on the house or combining or all your bills correct leslie welcome back and yeah, or putting it much. in 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 a bank account i believe yeah basically what i what i'm suggesting people do is if you have a regular mortgage and you want to pay it off faster in fact if you want to pay it off in half the time you don't need to invest your money switch it over to a home equity line of credit preferably one of the bank that allows you to combine your home equity line of credit with your checking account because once you put your check and your, your money into the home equity line of credit, you can borrow that money back out again. It's not like you can't get it. But what it does is that it actually it, it basically forces you to pay less interest every single month. And as long as you are putting in more money than you are taking out every single month, you will pay off your home in half the time or less. So there are uh, lots of calculators out there um, from banks in um, Australia and Europe and Canada that do this. I think uh, the United States is a little bit lagging behind in this, but they are catching up. I know that there's like uh, Paul DiMazzo is a billionaire. Um, he wrote the book, 80 Proven Ways to Become a Millionaire. Um, he talks about this. I know um, one of my friends um, who wrote the book, Winning Your Financial Game, Tom McPhee, he talks about this in a book called Prescription for Wealth. Uh, so the, it is catching on. I know there's... Um, I met a whole bunch of Austrian economists down in uh, Birmingham, Alabama. They talk about it as well. Um, however, here's a really interesting story that proves the point. Um, in, um, in the 1990s, like the late 80s and the 90s, there was a bunch of Canadian and American farmers that got together, and they wanted to find out why is it that these European farmers are able to come into our two countries, slap down $300,000 cash, when $300,000 cash was a lot of money, and expand their farming operations into our countries when everyone knew the cost of subsidies, they knew the cost of government, this and that, and uh, the material, how come they were more successful than the American and Canadian farmers? And what turned out, what they found out, is that it was the way they do their banking, and it was specifically the way they, they carry their mortgages. They didn't have mortgages. They all had simple interest lines of credits, and they combined their checking with their, um, with their simple interest loan. And that's why they were more successful. They just had better banking. That's pretty amazing. So um, when we talk about banking products um, and mortgages and credit cards and combining our credit together into one and paying a less interest rate, I don't think there's that many products out there that do that, though. Um, I mean, in America? Well... In America, you would have to get a simple interest loan, for sure. Mm -hmm. Convert your home into a simple interest loan, and just simply just plop. Once you get your check, just simply take the check, put it into your simple interest loan, and that'll be that. Mm -hmm. And so what will happen is the uh, the banks will take their interest from what's still left over, and then whatever you need to pay down bills, you do that, and you continue to do the same process every single month, and that will actually get it done. There are um, software programs, by the way, in the United States, uh, where they combine all your debt and all your credit cards and um, all your lines of credits, and as long as you put them in properly, these software programs tell you when to make any one of your payments because credit cards are also simple interest. You're only paying interest on what you have outstanding. So it, it's the exact same thing except it's a higher interest rate. 
so as long as uh, these computer programs will do the work for you, and I, I'm not going to tell you one off the top of your head, my head because I don't know one, um, but I can get the information if anyone wants it. And they'll tell you, make your payment here, make your payment there uh, during the times of the day, and that will actually also do the same job. But, you know, why mess around? Just get a simple interest loan, a home equity line of credit, and it'll just be much faster. That, that's a fantastic idea. And, and uh, callers, if you have any questions, uh, 631-1300, 321-321. Um, about that. Um, speaking of money, uh, today is the 52nd anniversary of JFK jumping into the U.S. steel business, the steel raising business, and I think that did pretty well, too, um, as far as steel. So uh, just yeah, wanted to bring that up. I remember, uh, Leslie, you probably know all about this. Uh, you know, remember when uh, U.S. steel raised prices of, of steel $6 per ton? And I understand. Uh, 1962 there was a major recession going on wasn't there i can't i can't tell you what happened during that time because i really simply don't know you are uh, making what you i do too know old, right for me i'm making you too old right well uh, i didn't know the name of that temptation song i'll let you know that <laughs> okay, that great. tells me that <laughs> a little That's bit a older than i am i've been trying to get leslie here he will be soon well you were talking about taxes and money and i thought that was uh, pretty good because it was one of the few times when i ever heard president kennedy really get angry he was really mad and uh, he jumped in in the middle and stopped that that uh, strike that u.s steel was going they were proposing raising steel prices six dollars a ton that would have made it almost impossible for anyone to buy a car a washer dryer any other type of appliance and he was mad now leslie you say that um you know you've already given us some ways of reducing our cost of borrowing um and, and taking a smaller percentage rate in combinations and stuff like that. I mean, you also told us that we will never pay off our national debt. Never. And I, Not I, the way it's designed. I, I agree. I agree. And ru- We're going to have and, a new, yeah. And tax, um, we will pay until the day that we die, and probably they'll only go up. Um, uh, I'm very concerned about the financial stability of, uh, of the U.S. dollar. Um, I'll just be very honest. I, I try my best to be honest and... Sometimes it gets me in trouble. Sometimes people like it. Um, you know, George Bush, when when the president, you know, when George Bush was president of the United States, he spent more money than all the presidents combined in 200 years. And when Barack Obama comes out of office, he will probably have spent more money than all the other presidents combined, including George Bush. And that's a debt problem. And you know, there's a lot of people want people, you know, they want the government to reduce the debt. I don't actually think they know how to do that, though. I don't, and quite frankly, I don't know how to do that for them. I, just, they, you know, yeah, I think I, we, financial literacy is really lacking in our, in our nation because, you know, we always, we get into these political realms, but really it's going to affect all of us when that dollar goes yeah. When that dollar crashes, I mean, well, and if we are what we have, um, if what we have, if we don't put it in the right place or invest it in the right place, like we say, some people say, you know, gold is money or some people say gold isn't money. Um, what's going to happen then? You know, I mean, what happens? Well, we can do if I can just uh, say, say one thing. When I talk about paying off your home and half the time and lasting a simple interest loan, one of the most important things about doing this is that you have actually stopped the fractional reserve lending system. Um, if you can be a part of the problem and be a part of the solution, you can be one or the other. Wouldn't it be great if you were part of the solution and you weren't causing mo- any more problems? Wait, wait, say we that again. Cause problems. Say, say that again. You, you, we would you actually... can be part of the problem. Or you can be part of the solution. But we would stop the what? The fractional? We would stop our own part of the process. We're also to blame when we actually make our loans and our payments and our credit cards and, and we take out things in mortgages because we are actually creating money when we do that. The United States isn't the only one that creates money. When you go and get yourself a mortgage at the bank, you are literally creating money. So when you actually convert your home over into a simple interest loan, you are actually, it's called fractional reserve lending. And so once you actually convert it into a simple interest loan, you are taking away the ability for the banks to fractionally reserve that, to so, lend, to lend so more I, than what I they have. So I think I just heard the beeper go up. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> so that, that, no, that's very interesting to me, and um, we're going to be talking about that more because I like to go deeper into it because uh, being part of the solution – 
you know, especially where it's helping, it's helping, uh, we're helping as a people, I mean, and being part of the solution, I mean, that can only mean more protection, uh, especially since our national debt, and you are right, I ha- I do keep track of the national debt, it has skyrocketed the last two uh, administrations, and after this one, it, it, it's just insane, just insane. <laughs> Keep- we've had uh, we've had forty. Uh, we've gone over the fortieth year. We're in the forty third or forty fourth year of us being off the gold standard since nineteen seventy one, when Nixon took us off. Nixon had no choice, by the way. A lot of people like to blame Richard Nixon um, because he took everyone off the gold standard, but mathematically speaking, he had no choice. He had to take everyone off the gold system. So the United States is a reserve currency of the world. And um, foreign banks, foreign central banks, convert their currencies into U.S. dollars in order to do exchanges with other countries. And that U.S. dollar was tied to gold at $35 an ounce. And now we know what's happened to gold since it's been tied off. But he had to do it. He had to do it. In that process of, um, in that process of the dollar uh, being decoupled from gold, um, it's been well over 40 years, and you can see in monetary history that we go through a currency change every 30 to 40 years. So we're in the 43rd year of this, 44th year of this. So I think people should start preparing for the possible reality that we are going to have a new currency, a new currency, whatever it is, whether it's a basket of currencies, whether we go back to a gold system, whether we go to a credit-based system, which would be nice, or whatever it is, uh, we don't know what that is. But we're gonna want. I'm gonna want to get your advice. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I, I know I do. Uh, Wayne has a, a, a clip here. Yeah, I've that got he, a question. He, he he has a question. Got yeah. a question for you, Leslie. He has a question. When you talk about being part of the solution or part of the problem, when uh, President Obama says pay your fair share, uh, what exactly does that mean? Here, this is. country succeeds when everyone gets a fair shot. When everyone does their fair share. Okay, put a number on that. What what's a fair share? Oh. Uh, such a hard question to answer. I have just spent the weekend with a very, very staunch Republican who would have his own opinion about that in regards to paying their fair share, and he would sit there and say, kind of like in an Ayn Rand, Atlas Shrug type of a way, that uh, you know the the rich should not be um, paying, overpaying for things on behalf of everybody else. And on the other side, if you listen to the Democrats talking, they're sitting there saying, well, you should pay your fair share because you're paying all this less in capital gains. And so there's this argument that goes back and forth between this group and that group. And this is why I, uh, if I was an American, I would never be a Democrat or Republican. I'd be neutral and just kind of start asking more and more questions all the way through. The solutions are never simple. That's why I only deal with individuals. You know, my mission is to assist people in their quest to live a purpose and joy, and I do that by sharing sound financial, personal health solutions, personal solutions. Um, I can't help the United States government or the the world government or the IMF. I mean, we just finished talk, had the G20 meeting, and Barack Obama, Stephen Harper, and Gordon from uh, Prime Minister Gordon from uh, London, um, from England. They went and attacked Vladimir Putin for things that had nothing to do with monetary policies. And so a lot of these guys, you know, in the upper echelons of our politics and and financial industries, they argue and they go back and forth. And it comes down to us normal people out here who are, you know, trying to struggle day to day. We're looking for answers. And so when I hear someone like Barack Obama say, pay your fair share, I have no idea what that means. And I don't know if the American people know what that I, means. I think he's saying that he wants us all to pay more, to pay more money, well, to pay his, more taxes. His net worth, uh, the, the last I heard, his net worth is $2 million, talking about Obama, and that's just what it says on the Internet. If he has $2 million in his bank account, then he can pay a bigger fair share than I can. Because I can yeah. tell you right now, I don't have $2 million in my account, so my fair share is not going to be anywhere near what his should be. Yeah, I. But that's all. That's Keynesian. We're on a Keynesian system, and 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 we definitely are. We and and you know I don't know what it's going to take to to get on the right system with our money because then we might have a chance. But like 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 um, 
Like Leslie said, the national debt will never be paid off. Never. No, and, it's not designed to be paid off. Yeah. And, 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 and a new currency coming in, yeah, inevitable. There will have to be a new currency that, that my, comes in. My guess.